Well hi, today I'm making the spindles for the Glasgow chair and I'm going to be using my rounding planes. So I'll take you through, show you my machine I use and take you through how I make them. Well here's the funny little machine that I use just really to turn the spindle of wood and what I then use, I use these giant pencil sharpeners called rounding planes to actually take off the shavings off the wood and get them to shape and I have different sizes of these rounding planes so I start off with a large one and just like pencil sharpeners as you can see on the bench here I work down in size and you see I've got some smaller ones here as well so quite effective these actually so take you right down into tiny diameters really down to three eighths of an inch but they're essentially just a spoke shave blade so a standard in fact that one's a record spoke shave blade put into a little aluminium cast body I will at some point pop a video up on making these. I have actually now got my furnace back into operation. <laughs> so the actual sort of turning head that I use, it's a homemade device needless to say, well it would have to be wouldn't it really? And it's a rather cronky old horse, uh, quarter horsepower motor here, which seems to work quite well, 1400 RPM. And I just have a system of pulley belts, so the idea is to get the revs down to a manageable level, which is about 200 RPM. So starter switch, motor, forward and reverse. There's a devil doing that wiring, I assure you. And um, so a little takeoff pulley there, a little two inch one on that bit, down to another pulley here. And then to get the speed really down, that's on an axle, connected to another pulley, smaller pulley, to another very large pulley and that gets the revs down from the 1500 or whatever the motor runs at which I think is about 1525 is it something like that uh, gets it down to about 200 rpm and so this chuck here turns at 200 I'll give a quick demo there we are see that's it in action <clears throat> nice quiet induction motor so not too noisy in fact that clicking is the chuck I haven't <laughs> taken the bits out of the chuck the actual chuck itself one can knock up on a metal working lathe and it essentially just takes collets so there we are different little collets to match the different tools that I have you could actually use a standard woodworking lathe if you have one where it goes down quite a low speed and you could put in a scroll metal workers type chuck here are my little collets you see but actually there's really no reason if you've got something like a jet um, woodworkers lathe one of the nice ones which go down quite low in speed you could just put a scroll chuck on one of those and actually get the same effect and I would probably do that now actually but I built this machine a while back I quite like using it so um, that's, that's what I use anyway so let, let's just show you how it's actually going in use so here you are, I've got a riven piece of wood here. By riven I mean I've just split it out by axe. So the actual break has gone straight down the grain. So you can follow the sort of grain of the wood from one end right to the other. Which I know I've said before when I've made chairs and things, that's what makes them so incredibly strong. So I've split it out of a log and I've then just draw knifed it roughly to shape. But it, it will be strong because the grain goes the whole way down. And all I'll do now is quite rough this, so it will probably turn out a little bit wonky. But um, it will show you at least how it works. I'll pop the wood in the chuck. I think I'll have to use my thin little liner jaws for this. So I'll, I'll use those ones. Get it in the chuck and then start turning. To secure the wood in the chuck, I just pop these little spacers around. And sort of force it in. Okay, so yeah, it's just about enough. It. One could shave it if one had to, but um, that's, that's fitting fine. Tighten the little grub screw up with the Allen key, and that will just really clamp it firmly in position. So that's that's ready for action. Right. So to actually get this rough down, what I do is I turn on roughly central 
I have got some wooden supports, but I never use them to actually keep this in position. I find my hand does it. It doesn't turn too fast. Get the rounding plane on and start going down. It's a bit noisy. Oh, <laughs> uh, it's like this, this here. Never mind, we're getting there. And it just goes down. It's, as I say, it's like a giant pencil sharpener, really. I'm now going to go down Whoops, a size, so I'm going to use this one. And you can see it just takes off one very nice long shaving. Now, you could use dry wood, but the advantage of using the green wood is it cuts so much more easily. So, I mean, look at that shaving. It would just be one continuous shaving, and I'm getting such a nice quality shaving because I'm basically cutting the green wood. It's a lot easier to cut green wood. It's the moisture content. And I, I often still compare it to tissue. If you have a tissue, a hand tissue, and it's dry, it's quite hard to break it. But if you soak it in a bit of water and then try and pull it apart, it goes really easily. And it's the same sort of thing with this wood. Because it's green, because it's green, <laughs> I'm going to get comments, aren't I, saying, why aren't you using a steady? I know, I should use a steady. I've actually got one I've made, I'll show you in a minute. It keeps me fit doing this. And look at this shaving, it just keeps piling off. And I'm getting quite a nice round, like, bowel effect here. Oh, it's nearly there. One, oops, long dowel, Bonk. and just undo the screw thread if I can find the Allen key, which could be a challenge, here it is. So that's, that's one sort of back dowel. I can easily finish off the end, either by hand or, um, oops, by other means, but look, there they are. I think they probably prefer it a bit minced up, so I only use it if I run out of the other stuff. There we are. Oh, so one. That's the thick version. I can next time round thin that down, and I can also shape it using a trapping plane, which I'll show you as well. This is my um, system of steadies that I have. So it's essentially the dowel can go through these holes and it just steadies them so I can screw that to the bench. I, to be honest, don't use it very often, but um, they're just little uprights, quite crudely made, and they slide in a channel and you screw that to your bench and you can slide it up and down and it keeps everything in the right position. No other benefit to be honest, but um, that's my little steady that I have got. I just don't tend to use it. <laughs> it's funny, isn't it, with some tools? You know you should use them, but you don't. And I, I'm afraid this is one of them for me, but never mind. One can take quite a jagged bit of timber like this one. I mean, it's split out quite crudely, but I think quite a lot of it will be usable as a spindle. We'll soon find out, but um, I'll take it down. See, this is almost triangular down this end, but rather than waste it, I'll see, because I may well find I can use the centre section It's a straighter grain, which is quite helpful. So it's not waving about quite so much. <laughs> so actually, I mean, there I'm into perfect round now, but even here, that is fairly round. So I think this piece will be usable. Probably that, that bit of it may not be. We'll see, it depends how thin I can take it down. You know, I'll, I'll keep going.
So I'll put a, a smaller one on. This is a half inch size. What I'm going to do actually is put a three quarter inch on it. And again, it comes off so happily. Try this half inch one. fine that's that's now a usable length down its whole length that's going to be quite usable because so it's round just there what one can do is go over with the trapping plane which is this tool and um, just take it tape taper it slightly I'll do that next That's lovely spindle quality smooth so in fact that was quite a rough bit of timber to start with but its whole length will be usable so it just shows don't be put off if it looks rough <laughs> as a quick diversion from turning spindles just show you my new sort of shed plans and how it's going I've basically been relaying this whole area here for foundation so what I'm going to do is extend that potting shed to make my workshop number two And it's usual thing, foundations take forever because I've been relaying all the sort of ground here to get it to the one level. So now my path it slopes down quite a bit, which is fine. But what it means is I've got a nice space there. So eight foot extension on the potting shed. The potting shed's an eight by six foot shed. So that would be my new shed and this is my existing one. So. It will give a nice bit more space actually. So I think we'll probably make a, a shaving probably about 50 metres long, something like that. There it goes, oh, oh, yeah, it. This wood's been probably in store now for about six weeks since I split it out the log, but it's still quite nice and damp. I've been very busy this week dodging the rain and getting the workshop well underway so it really is cracking along now actually. So I've had to make a bit of sort of like a beveled corner because the path's quite narrow around here and obviously no windows in at the moment but the green down there is the old potting shed. So I've removed the front off the potting shed and I'm putting this new extension onto the front of it. And my stained glass will be going in these top voids up there where the window space is. So um, it's going to be a great area inside. I'm going to be insulating it. So there's the loft roll insulation there, lining it with plywood. There's lots of mess from the potting shed in the back of this one at the moment. So it's all completely chocker. There's chaos everywhere. It sends my sheds into chaos doing something like this. It sends the house into chaos. I've got stuff everywhere. I always keep a lot of my stuff in the house, but um, somehow I just seem to have tools everywhere at the moment. Anyway, that's a bit of an update. Just take you down the side here. Oops, I've got planks on the floor. So here's my existing shed. The new one would be roughly the same sort of size. But I'm trying to make it look a bit more attractive in terms of you know being pleasing to look at down the garden and also not too bad for my neighbors as well. But there it is. So I'll keep going, keep dodging this rain. I'm packing lots of insulation into the shed at the moment. So what I'm doing is I've had to thicken up the old shed walls with some battening, but I'm essentially putting in this thick insulation. So it's like 100 millimeter loft insulation. And then I'll cover that with plywood. So I've done more walls over here. And oh yes, got the stained glass windows in. I'm still waiting on the double glazed units. 
for the main windows but uh, it's nice to see the stained glass in there and it's all a bit, a bit of a mess because I'm working around heaps of rubbish as usual but just putting quarter inch ply over the top of the insulation so that will act as a nice bit of a sort of thermal barrier done the same sort of thing with the ceiling so I've clad this part of the ceiling still got the clad the ceiling down here and it's this sort of stuff it seems to take forever so sort of sorting it out but it'll be worth it because it will keep it a lot warmer It's a bit dark to see very clearly, but this is my nice stained glass in position in the completed workshop. So this is the extension to the potting shed. You can see my stained glass in position there. And it's really what I call my clean workshop. So it's where I've, well, essentially got dust-free type environment. So I do leather work quite a bit. And so I've got a nice little work area there for things like the leather work or any metal work I want to do. It's just a, a nice good bench with good daylight in there. Got space now for my machines, which is nice. So they're there as well. And it just makes a very pleasant little area really. So I've still got the wood shop, obviously and um, this one just means well i don't have to take up the house <laughs> getting fewer complaints about my stuff around the house which is something mind you there's still a lot of my stuff in the house as i keep most of my bits in the house and actually keep fairly minimal stuff down in these sheds but um there you are here's one more of my leather items and it's a nice little bag this one so the owner has a dog actually so i thought well i'll put a similar sort of shaped dog on the front and it's got a shoulder strap and everything so a little popper on the front here and inside it's got a little zipper pocket for sort of coins and things like that. I enjoy making different things out of leather, it's quite good fun, it's a bit of a challenge, try different designs out. Well, when I started making the Glasgow chair I really wasn't too certain what it would look like. I knew it was going to be tall at the back and I had this idea of putting glass in it. Well, I've got an old cardboard box and I've been sketching out possible designs and this is what I'm making now. So design is set. And what it is, it's gonna be some nice spindles down the back here and a nice sort of arch back at the top, sort of crested shield kind of thing with um, some stained glass set into it. So I've got my basic spindles at the moment and what I need to do next is basically choose the best bits of the spindle and slim them down so that they become the, the finished spindles for the chair. So that's the plan so a bit of shaping and thinning of spindles next but at least now I know I'm working to this height for the actual chair back. So it's nice to get designs sort of sorted otherwise you sort of think Arr. I don't mind sort of undertaking a project a bit at a time and just seeing how it goes and um, sometimes it's quite nice you sort of get ideas as you work with the materials and they sort of come along but I quite like to have a, a rough idea so I've got that now I may change this back I may change what stained glass goes in I mean at the moment I'm sort of toying with the idea of a Glasgow rose in the back but we'll see and it will probably depend on what bits of glass I've got knocking around that's the fun of it though isn't it really I think one of my blades needs a bit of sharpening and um, well everyone sharpens differently don't they I, I personally quite like old stones now that's a bit old-fashioned I know I have got water stones but I, I don't know I just like old stones and the technology on them has changed so much now so you know you can get really quite fine old stones I have got a special sharpening holder but I, I have to be honest I tend to be quite lazy and um, just sharpen them on the hoof. So, I mean, what I personally do is I just flatten off the back of the blade. These spoke shaved blades, if you get the likes of the record ones, they're quite crude actually. They're quite crudely ground off. I mean, they're fine. They do the job perfectly okay. They're not like the sort of Veritas or the Ly Nielsen, which are beautifully honed. But, um, of which I do, I do have quite a few various tools. I quite like them actually, but um, 
these record ones they're fine they're very good they keep their edge they just need a little bit more work on them There's nothing wrong with that anyway what i personally do is just get the back cleaned up a bit more and then i just put a edge on now as i say i <laughs> i do have various jigs but to be frank what's wrong with your eyes it tends to work okay the test is do you get shavings so i'm just putting a new touching edge on this it's not a major rehone or regrind i have found with the oil actually on your oil stones it's best to use um the, the good refined oil and i do actually pay good money to get the the sharpening stone oil because it's, it is quite nice sort of stuff what i'm wanting to do is make these spindles so that they're sort of tapered so they have a nice bulb and then they sort of taper and look quite elegant and long and graceful so what i'm doing basically is marking off three inches and then nine inches for my bulb area and then three inches and what i do i go in with my rounding planes up to the lines and just sort of taper it in and then i finish it off with this plane which just gives a nice gentle gradient on the entry so i'll do that next so first off i'm going in with a half inch rounder and i'm just taking off the sort of excess down to half an inch basically and i'll take it to my first pencil line I'm definitely getting a better cut with this sharpened blade. You can tweak these rounders and really get them pretty good if you keep at them. So I'm coming up, that's my first little marker. So I'll stop when I get to that. There we are, about there. So back that out. Coming out, whoops, not coming out that easily actually on this one. Okay, but I mean, that, that shavings you see, so I know the tool's fairly, fairly sharp. Anyway, next one is what I call a trapping plane. Oops, and I have this, there we are, just traps over. Takes a fine shaving off gets the spindle a bit smooth. Now here this is where I've got the fierce graduation where well, I work at it a bit. I sort of work a bit of a taper on there. So there's a gradual transition. And it's just a kind of on the eye. Sorry about the squeaks. And you can see fairly quickly one gets quite a nice effect. All right, that's probably sufficient for that at the moment. Right, so that's the taper that way. And now I just need to do the taper down this end. So it's really the same, exactly the same principle. It's down to half an inch again, but not very far. And then it's straight in with the trapping thing. Move that all off. There we are, and that just gets it a nice gradual shape. And it's just sort of easy on the eye. Here what makes a nice elegant spindle. That's nearly there. Uh. Right. 
And there we have it, you see, one nice spindle. And I've left excess wood at each end so I can tweak this around when it comes to fitting and then trim them. Well, I've got the spindles made up now and I've just been placing them into a sort of possible design. Just trying to get a bit of a feel for what they're like. So what I'll do now, I'll probably be getting on with the other parts of the chair, but when I come back to the spindles, I will be going over them just to try it with a scraper, a curved scraper, to get them nice and sort of, well, smooth really, all over on the surface, perfectly nice, that when they catch the light, they look good. And um, I'll obviously be trimming them to length as well, but for the time being, that's the spindles made, and they can be seasoning now, so I'll put them in my air and cupboard to warm up. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed watching this one, and thanks again for watching.